Royal Observatory was founded in 1675 and it had a single role to fulfil and that was to provide the astronomical data that could enable mariners to find their longitude at sea. And this was using what we call lunar distance method. It was a method that had been known for a long time to be practicable and useful, but the astronomical data was just not available. And it took the Astronomers Royal many, many years to perfect it to a point where the data could be used. And interestingly, this comes at the same time as the mechanical timekeeper was perfected to the level it could be taken to see. Timekeeping, obviously essential to finding longitude at sea. You can measure that in degrees around the Earth's circumference, or you can talk about it in time difference. So an obvious solution would be to carry a watch or a clock that keeps your home time. And you can refer to that and compare it against the sighting of the noon sun, get your time difference and work out your longitude. With this idea, John Harrison comes to London and he speaks to the Astronomer Royal at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. And that's Edmund Halley. Edmund Halley recommended that Harrison go to see George Graham. So George Graham had invented and published a paper in 1726 about his mercurial temperature compensation. And John Harrison came to London having achieved the same compensation, not with mercury, but with a very ingenious combination of brass and steel rods in what we call the gridiron. And I think that this impressed George Graham enough to become John Harrison's first patron and rally support for him. So the first time he put John Harrison returns to Lincolnshire to build this machine, brings it back to London. And it, it's extraordinary, unlike any other clock that's ever been made before with its sort of dumbbell bar balances swinging in opposition. It was sent to sea, to Lisbon, and it fared pretty poorly. It was a rough crossing. John Harrison was seasick. The timekeeper didn't work very well, but on the return journey, the conditions were far more favorable and the timekeeper worked well enough for John Harrison to make a very important definition of the first sighting of land. And he differentiated start point from the lizard, which enabled the flotilla to avoid rocks, the Eddiston rocks. So tremendous achievement. On the strength of that trial, John Harrison was granted money by the Board of Longitude to start work on his second timekeeper. And he completes H2 in a very short space of time, under three years. During the testing of it in his home, he realizes that there's another flaw, that with these bar balances, if the timekeeper is subjected to a circular motion, centrifugal force can hold them apart, and that obviously will affect their timekeeping. So he, again, goes back to the Board of Longitude and says, here is the timekeeper, but it needs further improvement. I know how to do it. And again, he's encouraged, he's given money to start the timekeeper we call H3. And he substitutes the bar balances with the circular balances. And this eliminates the problem you get with centrifugal force. Now, he has H3 in his workshop for a total of around 19 years. During the making of that machine is, is that very important moment when he turns to improving watch work. When you look at the gallery, you see one, two, three big machines, watch. And it's not in any shape or form a process of perfection and then miniaturization. This is a completely different technology. I mean, the big timekeepers, they have the grasshopper escapement at their heart. They do not need lubrication. It gives them tremendous advantage. The watch needs lubrication. It's a jeweled watch. The balance wheel is the key element. John Harrison tells us that he made his balance around three times larger than the larger balances in common watches and three times heavier and also made it run faster. H4 was taken on board ship in 1761 on a voyage to Jamaica and it was left in the hands of John Harrison's son William. Using the watch, William Harrison was able to place their position relative to Madeira successfully. So the watch proved itself as a really worthy tool for navigation. 